Hi guys, it's Toast Friday and hope you guys are all having an amazing weekend so far. As the week has just come to an end and we're here again with our episode on Toast Friday. And hopefully by the time we're done with this video today, you would have picked up one or two things to learn regarding ethical hacking. Like we previously said in our various videos, we're not planning to do any penetration testing event this year. It's okay. There are other resources out there uh, already doing that, but we plan to commence by next year and the day will be announced. Um, as long as we're alive, we'll all be here and we'll all partake in the goodies we see Gateway Security is about to bring for next year. So after today's um, video on Tools Friday, we'll be a bit slow down because we are working on our paid course on C programming and it's taking a whole ton of our time in addition to other private events we have which um, are necessary that we do those events and ensure that we carry out the various schedules that we are assigned to regarding this event so hopefully before the end of this month, we should be rounding up a few things in August, as we said, towards the ending of August, our first course for the year, which is C programming will be out and we would notify you on what platform we have decided to publish this course. And of course the cost of, you know, getting a subscription um, for this course. So on today's tools is a tool for vulnerability assessment and not just vulnerability assessment on web applications, but also on IoT devices, routers, and switches. This tool is an awesome tool designed by a reputable organizations we all know, which is OWAPS. And it's a very good tool if you're into penetration testing, ethical hacking, or bug bounty hunting, you should use this tool. But please and please, um, Anything we discuss here as the disclaimer and copyright rightly said, we are only doing this for educational purposes. So if you ever use this for any nefarious activities or any sinister act, um, you see gateway security will not be held responsible. So without further ado, let's get started with today's episode. So the tool for today is OWAP's Net Tacker. This tool performs excellently well in determining vulnerabilities that exist in web applications, IoT devices such as Cicada, which is also known as the supervisory control and data acquisition. It also performs excellently well in restricted areas in also assessing vulnerabilities that exist in routers, web servers, logins and authentications, and non-indexed HTTP protocol. Furthermore, you can also use it to test paradox systems, cameras, firewalls, UTM, webmails, VPN, RDP, SSH, FTP, telnet services, proxy servers such as Cloudflare, which is a content delivery network, and many other devices such as Juniper, Cisco, and other switches. So it's a very awesome tool and it covers a broad spectrum. If you're really into vast penetration testing and not just web application penetration testing, then you should get this tool. It also supports single domain or bulk domain vulnerability scanning. So in this case, let's say you have a group of domain, right? You want to scan, you can pass the file and NetTacker would scan this file individually in terms of assessing each of the domain or IP addresses to determine the vulnerabilities that exist in those domains. It also has the capabilities of fuzzing, information gathering, web crawling activities. So it can crawl the web page and obtain or retrieve information from the web page. Hackers or penetration testers can now find a way to use this information to exploit the target which they have fed to the net attacker tool. By default, this tool pass out the results in HTML file. So this result comprises of 
the information is gathered or discovered during the process of conducting the scanning. To download this tool, you visit the GitHub link OWAP's NetTacker. Of course, the tool is a Git clone repository. It offers that. It also offers a Docker install. But not everybody is expert in installing tools using Docker. So today we'll be making it an easy or simple install for you. So you can just run this tool easily and get this tool working for you. Also, we'll just be demoing just a single domain and the results will be blurring them out as usual just to protect the reputation of the organization we are using to demonstrate this tool and also protect our own image as well, not to be going against the law in terms of revealing private information to the public. So to get started, let's get our Kali Linux in our virtual box fired up. So we log in. Now this is the GitHub repository of the NetTacker. You can refresh the page. Okay, sorry about that. So we can refresh the page. Sorry, our internet was offline while we we're recording. So you just want to come here. And this is the latest. It was released in January and four months ago there was a little update. So you come here, you copy this. Now, usually, if you are installing tools that has to do with GitHub repository, you want to organize your tool so you can be able to access the database. So I can just say CD to desktop. Now I can say MKDIR first, hack tool. Then we'll CD into hack tool. Then we clear this and we'll say git clone. Then we paste clipboard and we hit enter. Now, NetTacker should be done installing in a few minutes or seconds. Okay, now if we ls, we can see NetTacker is there. So we see the into NetTacker. Now, to run the tool, you use Python. Let's ls first. So you can see what's going on. Now, this is the tool itself. And whenever you see a tool that has the .py extension, it means the tool runs with Python. So we have to run this tool right now. So we'll say Python netdocker.py minus h. We should have an error because we have not installed the requirement.txt. Good. So we come here, just copy this, and we paste, and we hit enter, and wait for a few minutes. It's okay. Ignore whatever red messages you're seeing here on the screen. Then you clear this. Now we go back and we say netaka.py and on stage to have the help comments. Now let's read a few of those things here. So you can see here we have, if you want to choose for language, you can ignore this. Later you can go through it by your own self. So this is for target. So we want to specify a single target, we use the minus i. We want to specify a list of targets, we use the l. Now coming down, um, you can see a few other information. Show all models, profile profiles, show all profiles exclude models there are other information you can also see here usernames to reveal a list of usernames usernames um, list to read from a file then for password as well now let's do a single domain scan with netacker so i can come and say python netacker.py then let's say we specify this domain. Then we come here. Let's pick up. Um, hold on. Okay. Now we have selected models, right? So we can say. 
minus t so the t is for threshold you can specify at least the maximum of 100 but due to the way most organizations are security conscious i would suggest you increase the value so you can use like 500 600 and so on but in this case we'll be using 60 sorry we'll say minus m and we'll say all so we want it to scan across all of the range of information it can gather about this domain and of course review if there are open services that we can exploit or possible vulnerabilities and one beautiful thing about NetHacker is that if the services is hiding behind a CDN it's going to detect it and tell us what type of CDN services the target or the domain is behind so we can now hit enter okay so unrecognized argument so i think we probably made a mistake let's reveal it again minus t minus m okay so we are supposed to specify minus i for single domain sorry about that so this should take about a few minutes it's going to take a few minutes because um, the organization we are trying to scan is quite a big organization and you can see it loaded over 97 models to test the domain organizations like this have quite a strong firewall so they can be noticing the probing the way it's coming in terms of the threshold and definitely be limiting the scan now you can see we have a 200 now this 200 ok means always look out for the 200 ok the 200 ok reveals the information about the target so if you can see here we can see the robot.txt then we can see the favicon 200 ok so with the information gathered using NetTacker, you can now possibly further conduct additional vulnerabilities on the target in terms of discovering security loopholes and flaws that exist in the target or the domain that you supply so this is going to take some time we'll just wait for a few minutes but if it's taking longer than 15 20 minutes then i'll have to stop this but go through NetTacker, try and find how to use this tool there are a lot of applications of this tool but this year like we said we're not doing penetration testing so we don't be demonstrating anything further just showing you how to install this tool and using a few of these arguments to so use additional arguments just go through the help of NetTacker, then implement these arguments and find a way to use them for your own benefit now you can see it tells us path detected got different response from original request status code error now you can understand that okay this particular domain or this particular target has a, a web application firewall installed that will now give you an insight of what to do in terms of if you're going to use popsuit or any other tool like sub proxy on how to encode your parameters to bypass the path and from here you can see the thread only 10 has been used organizations as big as uh, social networks are very very you know security conscious so to prevent possible litigations these organizations ensure that they use strong security or implement strong security measures and by so doing limit or curb the level of 
cyber incident they experience from external threat actors. Now, we purposely close the connection as we do not want to go further. If you look further, you can see the list of faults scanned and you can see detected WAF and detected WARF. We couldn't wait for their connection to complete because it's quite time consuming. What you can see here, it tells us that WARF was detected and it gives us an insight of the level of security implementation in terms of the strength on how the WAF was implemented. As you can see, the delay in time to get results from the various scan conducted so far gives us an idea that, okay, this target is not an easy target or an easy target to exploit. And furthermore, you can see towards the end in here, it tells us where the report is. So if we see the into the dot data and we see the into results and we ls, now we can cut this file to see what data network are fetched during its uh, vulnerability scanning. So we can say cart, press clipboard. You can see so these are all the informations you can go through them and if you're good with javascript there are possibilities there there might be informations that will be revealed here so this tool is an awesome tool try and take a look at it there's a much information about this tool we would have desired to share with you but like we said our tools friday is just about introducing you to tools and showing you how they work but we are not going to go in depth so by next year when we'll be focusing core penetration testing then we'll be showing you various tools that we'll be using and how we apply our technicalities or methodology using these tools to assess a target so with that we have finally come to an end of this week's tools friday episode and we hope you have learned something new if you find this video interesting please give us a like by hitting that thumbs up button subscribe by hitting that subscribe button and turn on notification bell so you'll be the first to get notified when next we post another episode on tools friday with fixie gateway security thanks for watching and see you next time bye friends.